All right, guys, welcome to day six of how to become a better hair cutter in seven days. Uh, this masterclass is almost over. We got one day left. Today, we're gonna focus on scissor over comb. I wanna break down what tools you need to perfect your scissor over comb technique. And also, we're gonna go over the proper mechanics to get the end result you're looking for. So the first thing I wanna talk about is scissor length. This is a six and a half inch FSE Precision Elite scissor. The reason I go six and a half inches is because it's got a lot more reach on the comb. So when you think about as you're holding up the comb here, when I have a six and a half inch blade, I can reach almost halfway across that comb, which makes things a lot easier as I'm working through it. If you have a shorter scissor, like the five inch FSE Precision Elite that I use for all my precision cutting, you could see that as I go in here, I can barely get an inch and a half of blade on the comb. And then as you put that to the head, your hand can get in the way of the head as well. So it's just very uncomfortable. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're really just gonna work this side portion of the head to show you guys the technique. I'm also gonna show you uh, using not only a regular scissor, but also a blending scissor to work a line as well. Um, I'm gonna take my Velcro clip here and I'm just gonna section away from the parietal ridge up. So we'll go right across that parietal ridge, comb down the rest of the hair and then just section that away. The Velcro clip helps hold it nice and tight and then I can work from the top down. So anytime I'm working with longer hair, I'm gonna go from the top section, I wanna find my length, and then I'm gonna continue and connect it all through as I work down. If I'm working with shorter hair, then I'll go from the bottom and I'll work my line up and drag the scissor through it. So like everything else, there's multiple ways to go about it. None of it is really wrong, but what can be really helpful is understanding your choice and when to use it. So we're gonna start at the top because it's a little bit longer length. I'm gonna use the length of the blade on my scissor to part and section out and then slide my comb up underneath. Once I get that there, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use my blade, and I'm gonna cut my line. So just like that. I might go through it a couple times just to dust it and get a really nice solid line through there. And then I just continue lifting the hair up and now I can see my guideline through and I go through and connect it. So same thing here, bring that hair up. Now I see my guideline through using the bone of the comb as my guide for my blade, work through it. So just continuing. So work on picking up that hair with your scissor just like that. Now, once I have that length and everything looks nice, if I wanna go a little bit tighter, I can work in at the temple and this I'll slide my comb up in the hair. Because once the hair is shorter, it's a lot easier to control. So just like that, and we go a little bit tighter in there. So that is really the technique. I want you guys to work on that over and over again. Find those short mannequins that you probably wouldn't do anything else with and just work that scissor over comb technique. Something that can also help with your scissor over comb technique, you could take the FSE Dual uh, 20 Pro. This allows you to do texturizing and blending. You want the blade down for blending. So if the blade is down, it will blend the hair. If the blade is up like this, we have the teeth down, um, it will texturize. So make sure you have that blade down and then you can do the same exact technique, but instead of it taking those harsh lines or creating harsh lines, it just blends and softens. So you go through and you can just dust and detail and soften all those lines that you created. Still cutting it at the same length, it's just softening the edge so it doesn't have as hard of lines in it. I'll show you guys that technique also in the back here because a lot of times when you have uh, the cowlick area and this heavier, thicker hair, and then it goes into the more faded part, still use the blending scissor to lift the hair up and then just work to soften that line just like that. So come through. Lift that hair into the comb like that. Find where that weight line is and just work the blending scissor through it. And then you get a nice soft edge, much heavier line here. And then it's basically gone, uh, invisible line throughout the back. So that's another great technique to do with your Dual 20 Pro 
or your Blend 20 Elite scissor as well. All right, guys, so that finishes up day six. Uh, my challenge to you guys is just work this scissor over comb technique on anybody you can get your hands on. If it's a mannequin that you have shoved away somewhere that's got super short hair, try it on that. Uh, or just take those clients that maybe you wouldn't have taken before and work scissor over comb. One of my favorite things about uh, this scissor over comb technique is that it has a more uh, handmade feel. And a lot of clients with shorter hair really like that natural texture that it gives it. Uh, as opposed to doing a clipper cut and having a little bit more of a machine made effect. So somebody that wants, you know, maybe not a super tight fade, but they want a really nice clean short haircut. Scissor over comb technique works really, really well. So uh, let's master it, work really hard on it guys. Tomorrow is our last day, day seven. I got three great haircutting videos that are exclusive to you guys. Three different haircuts uh, that I'll share with you. And it's really gonna combine everything that we've done in the last six days into three different videos, three different lengths of cut. So uh, excited for that. Get your rest tomorrow. We got our last day. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next video.